Hey everyone, what's up, Luke here, and welcome back to a new episode with some pot limit Oma content. In today's session, we're gonna jump into C betting in position, and I'm gonna give you a couple of tips and tricks that will help you next time you're playing pot limit Oma to understand better what hands to bet versus what hands to check. I'm gonna use PLO Trainer to dive into a random board, and we're gonna learn along the way. It will be a short, quick video with a couple of pointers. And if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the link in the description below where you can get access to PLO Trainer and learn more about this software. We're gonna use PLO Trainer and I'm opening up the post slop section. I'm gonna go to a 100 big lined solution. It's a single race pot. I wanna jump into button versus big blind, the most common positions. And this window will pop up with a select a flop overview. I'm gonna use a couple of filters here because I wanna jump into an unpaired board. We're gonna select suits. You can go for rainbow, single suited or monotone. I'm gonna select single suited unpaired boards that also have a turn available. These are all the boards that you can pick from. And I'm gonna click on load a random board which will be a new feature that is going to be implemented soon in the software. And it basically allows you to just not have to choose it yourself, but a random board will open. As you can see, Jack75 is opening up. We're gonna make the out of position check. We as the button open our range and we're gonna browse through a couple of strength buckets and show you how a battering strategy is built. Now, the first thing you wanna think about here when it comes to the flop solution is how do ranges interact to this board? And we're playing a button versus big blind solution. So both have a wide preflop range. And therefore on a board texture like this, when it comes to strongest mate hands, we are somewhat competitive. The imposition player will do a little bit better because he has like more of the not suited hands. And the out of position player will three bet some of his best double suited rundowns that occasionally connect to this board. But generally speaking, the in position player is in an equity advantage here, is in a slight range advantage. But you can see that the in position player is not going to do an extremely high volume of betting. He's betting 48% of the time if he's using a three quarter pot bet sizing. Now, a general concept to think about when you are betting in position and you have to decide whether to check or bet is that you, especially on more dynamic boards when ranges are somewhat competitive at least, you wanna use somewhat of a polarized betting strategy. And that is because a lot of our medium strong hands, they don't really benefit from betting and inflating the pot. Many medium strong hands, they will have trouble playing turns and rivers if they get cold, playing against a more narrow range. They cannot double barrel or triple barrel often, so they're going to check and keep the pot small. And a polarized betting strategy basically means is that we're betting the best hands in our range, so the top part, and we're betting the weakest hands in our range that have good blockers or backup equity. And therefore, the middle part of our range is often going to be put in our checkback range. And that is the first concept you, think you should think about. Bet the best hands, bet your best weakest hands, basically, and then check back the more medium strong hands. And we can illustrate that by going into the buckets here and select like any bucket or hand class, you can call it as well, that isn't the absolute nuts. So we're not gonna look at sets, they are too obvious. Let's leave two pair also out of the way here. Even two pairs are already 50-50 between betting and checking, so that already shows that we're gonna check back a lot of two pairs. You can click on this icon here and we can click on the show range for selection. And now we are filtering down for all the two pairs in our range, for example. You can see that we are splitting 50-50. If we add more backup to the two pair, you can see that we're going to start to bet more often. For example, with a flush draw, 75% of the time we are betting. If we don't have a flush draw and if we don't have a straight draw, for example, you can see that the betting frequency is dropping significantly. And on the left side, you will see hands that don't perform as great if you, if you, as you might think. For example, I had like King, Queen, Jack, seven here. We can type it in here as well. So King, Queen, Jack, seven. You can see that this hand is a quite high frequency checkback. And that is because a lot of the time, if you bet and get cold, 
you cannot comfortably barrel multiple streets. So you always want to think about, and that's the next thing to keep in mind, you always want to think about the playability and the nuttiness of your hand down the road. So the more happy you are to continuously barrel multiple streets, the more likely it is that you want to start batting in the first place. The less playability, the less nutted your hand is, the more often you are deciding to check, especially if you have some showdown value. So let's remove the two pairs here, go back to the buckets. And we can look into the one pair region as well, for example. You can see that over pairs 31% of the time betting, over pairs 69% of the time checking. So you can see very quickly that there is a lot of checking with hands that you might think are actually pretty good. So I'm going to filter for, let's say, the top pair hand. Click on the range here. You can see the top pair hands that we are betting versus checking. And again, if we add a flush draw to top pair, you can see that the betting frequency increases significantly. If we remove the flush draw, you can see that we are going to check 50-50 here. And the hands that are betting, you can see that they have some form of additional equity, right? Like they have an open-ended straight draw. They have an open-ended straight draw with a with a backdoor flush draw, for example, they have only an open-ended straight draw, but still they have some form of backup. And these hands, they can either barrel many streets often, they can continue versus check raise. Well, on the left side, you can see that King, Queen, Jack, Nine, for example, a classic medium strong hand without great backup, without a lot of playability on the future streets. Like if we don't have that spade, you can see that we are going to check. So with the spade, we have more fold equity and therefore we generate a better chance that we can just take down the pot. So that could be a hand that you decide to check, uh, that you decide to bet actually. But on the left side, you can see without a spade, without a backdoor flush rule, for example, like all these hands were just going to check back. So polar polarized betting strategy in position, betting the best hands, checking the medium strong hands, and then from your weakest part of your range, you're going to bet the ones with additional blockers or backup, and you're going to check the ones without basically. In addition to that, you want to think about nuttiness down the road. So the more often you can bet multiple streets, the more likely it is you can dominate your opponent's draws, the more likely it is that you actually want to start betting. So those are two key principles to always think about when you, when you want to bet or check. Let me go back to the bucket overview one more time. We can also look into the draws, for example. You can also see the weight here, by the way. So draws, we have 17.44% of the time we have a draw. And here you can see that if you have a flush draw, you're much more likely to bet, for example, than if you have only a straight draw. And that is because on the two-tone board, the flush draw is a very powerful component. You have more equity, more nuttiness down the road, more chance to dominate. But with a straight draw, you're pretty vulnerable because there's also the flush draw out there. So keep that in mind, the distinction between those elements on a two-tone board, flush draws and flush draw blockers are extremely powerful. Also, when you think about your weakest hands in your range, if you want to bet them, they often come with a spade blocker, for example. If you don't have a spade blocker and you have a very marginal hand, it's extremely unlikely that you actually want to start betting. You want to block your opponent's best draw possible, the most likely continues, and you want to have some future blockers and one of the better future blockers on a two-tone board is of course having a spade in your hand. If you open up the training feature of this tool, you can actually start doing a little bit of quizzing for yourself and play around with a lot of hand examples. So for example, this one, King, 10, 10, 5, we got a five blocker, we got one spade, we got future blockers with a 10. When you think about a polarized strategy, is this hand medium strong? It is somewhat, but it's definitely at the bottom. When you think about the bottom hands of your medium strong hands and the weaker part of your range, if you have backup and blockers, you're often going to bet. So I would say this is a good hand to bet. Stacking multiple blockers. We have got a five, we got two tens as future blockers, and we got one spade. While the playability, if we check, is very marginal. So I would bet here, which is good. Next up, we got nine, eight, seven, six. So we got a middle pair. We got a wrap. We got one spade. This is probably pretty close. I would say we're still strong enough to bet because we also have the spade. But because we don't have that flush rule or backdoor flush rule, it could definitely be a reasonable check. But we can continue against the check raise and we can also fold out equity by folding out some overcards. So I would go ahead and bet here, which is good. King, queen, jack, seven. 
bare top two pair. We learned that medium strong hands without backup are going to play passively, so I would check it. Ace queen seven deuce, definitely a weak hand in our range, but we don't have great blockers. We don't have any backup, so this is just a check and give up. Check an eight three. We got top pair. We got a gutter. Um, we don't have a spade or backdoor flush draw, so it seems to be a clear check. On the other hand, I wouldn't be surprised if this would be a bad fold on the flop because we can fold out some equity, we can push out over cards. Our hand doesn't play great at all as a check. We're not going to lose much EV if we bet and get raised. We have an easy fold and the showdown value is pretty marginal. So I'm very much in between here. I think betting is okay, uh, but apparently the gutter is good enough to come in for a check. A 10 8 4 here we got an open-ended straight draw, uh, or basically a double cutter with a backdoor and a flush draw. Definitely a hand you want to check. We don't want to bet and get check raised here, which would be pretty awkward. A says queen deuce. Uh, this is a hand where we have some showdown value, but we don't have great additional blockers. If we would have the ace of spades, I think betting would be fine. I think this is a little bit too weak to come in for a bet. Ace King 9 7. We got the nut flush blocker, the nut flush draw blocker, basically. We got a 7. We got the backdoor flush draw, so you could argue that checking is fine. I would probably go ahead and bet because we're just stacking a lot of good components. We have the ace of spade. We got the 7. We got a 9 blocking some straight draws. So I think batting and folding versus check raise. Let's do one more hand. 6 5 4 3. We got the bottom rep with the flush draw. I think this hand is definitely strong enough to bet. And you can see how helpful this is basically to quickly test yourself and see, do I understand the principles about a polarized betting strategy, about nuttiness, and uh, just do a lot of training here. Okay, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to smash up that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, and I uh, hope to see you soon here for more content about Pod Limitoma.